Anyway, anyway, for those that are just joining us, we are doing a love story step. So we're going to draft a vintage cube here and tell a tale of love, of romance, between two different planeswalkers. And we have two planeswalkers in our opening pack. So will the love story just be these two? Will it just be Karn and Gideon? Or will it get more complicated? Will there be twists and turns to this tale? There's only one way to find out, and that's sticking around. We're going to start with the, uh, the robot daddy. I think, I think Karn is a more stable love interest. Partly because Gideon's fucking dead, right? <laughs> and, and look at Karn here. Got a book open, got a globe up, all worldly-like. And spitting out kids! Karn is very kid-friendly. How about Karn plus Karn? Karn plus Karn could work. We got Get Karn and Bizarro Karn. Ooh, should Urza be in here? Make things a little complicated. Karn's trying to go on dates, Urza's like looking over the shoulder. You better be bring Karn back by nine. <laughs> Just for <freaking. laughs> What do Karn and Elspeth have in common? I guess they're both, both pooping out creatures. I kinda wanna draft the Shieldred. <laughs> do I need a story reason to draft the Shieldred? Is she the maid of honor? Shieldred's the stepmom? I, I'm into that. I'm into that. It can be a whole family kind of love story. <laughs> Maybe I should have phrased it differently. We're telling a, a complete tale. Multiple characters. They don't all have to be love interests. <laughs> whatever time is least... Whatever time is least convenient for you personally, Toadshurst, is the new stream time. And you can just lock that in for eternity. So eventually we're gonna need a wedding. We don't have a we don't have a love interest for Karn yet, but eventually we will have a wedding, and that wedding will need a ring bearer. And there's always gonna have a ring, right? It might not it might not be her ring. But she'll have someone's. Urza can be the something blue. Emery seems fitting with what we got going on. I don't think our I don't think our love story I don't think our magic um fanfic should involve real people. I don't I don't know if I want to get Bob Maher into this. I've met, I've met Bob. <laughs> He's a nice guy. <laughs> Let's not make this too weird. I'm just gonna draft Emery here. Good sword for the uh She's here to she's here to bring the sword, right? You need a store a sword for a good love story. I watched Excalibur like kinda recently. And the movie takes pains to remind you that it's not a movie about King Arthur. It's a movie about that fucking sword. <laughs> and you should respect it. Good stuff. So we don't have a workshop deck here yet. I think we gotta take this hanger back walker, huh? Hmm. I think for Karn to truly be in the mood, having fellow constructs around might be good, might be a good idea. A wedding carriage, yeah.
or a first date carriage. <laughs> we don't even we don't even know who's getting married yet. Let's not get ahead of ourselves. Speaking of a romantic first date, how do we feel about him to Turok? Nice tune to set the mood. Do you think Karn and Garrick would get along? Is that a good match? Karn does appear to be into loincloths. They have that in common. Some primal beasts. <laughs> you think Karn's into Garrick's wild energy? They say opposites attract, and that's probably why this isn't going to work out. The both loincloth and shoulder pad folks. <laughs> Karn's looking at prospective suitors. They're all just Elspeth, coming up to the door one at a time. Elspeth wearing, like, a fake fucking nose and glasses. <laughs> Definitely not Elspeth. Just really wants to get her, her carnage on, huh? Oh shit, what up? Oh shit, what up? I'm just gonna grab an artifact. <laughs> the, the, the Chad. The chat energy coming back around. Giving Karn a second chance. And you know, I think there's I think there's something there. Like facing rejection, but hanging out, not uh not being too petty. Not being too petty to, to take yourself off the table. Giving people room to change. But not being pushy about it. Just being like, yep, still available. In case you change your mind. I think I'm by it. I think Gideon's still on the table. Dark Ritual is a first date, though. I don't know. I don't know if that's a. I don't know if that's a Karn and Gideon sort of, uh, sort of vibe. Chad Gideon might not be into the Dark Rituals. More of a third date thing. Yeah, yeah. Maybe they'll take a break. Consider their options. Think about what went down. Gush is the 15th pick, huh? The climax of the pack? Well then. What am I supposed to do with this shit? I think our lovers might have met at an ancient tomb. Or maybe that's their fa favorite date spot. Gideon thought that... Karn was into tombs. Karn's like, no, tome! I said I liked tomes! That's not a very good Karn impression. I mean, uh, beep boop. Could be Gideon's tomb. <laughs> tomb, yeah. Could be Gideon's tomb. Oh man, does that mean that Karn needs to move on? That was only the first act. Is Karn just gonna like marry the first fucking planeswalker that he develops a relationship with? Can't just fall for every monkey that runs comes around, right? Ooh. 
suitors giving out jewelry. Now we got a courtship. What do we like here? Something borrowed? Oh, love it. You thinking petty theft? Double date with the Nalars? Yeah, maybe. Maybe that works out. Karn expanding. Expanding his horizons. Yeah, Karn didn't have a, a typical human upbringing. Doesn't seem like he'd be closed-minded about that sort of thing, huh? Karn's basically just like data exploring, exploring human sexuality. Oh man. <laughs> and after that, after that torrid night, Karn finally, Karn, Karn finally found a worthy suitor. Himself. <laughs> They're even looking at each other. Is this a match made in heaven or what? <clears throat> so I'm uh, really into robots. <laughs> Oh, you really? <laughs> oh my. Learning to love yourself is important. And in this case, everything. It's its the only thing of importance. That's where the love story is, is beginning and ending here. Mm. Fiend's Tower? Unlicensed hearse? Can they get married in a hearse? Or is this where he, is this trucking off all of Karn's previous suitors? After new, Karn, new Karn gets done with them? This could be a fine honeymoon spot, huh? If you don't scald as easily as a, as a human does. Could be romantic. Is the worn power stone the ring? Vibes are off with dress. I don't think that's a healthy relationship. Now I kind of wish I had that smokestack, huh? Or the workshops, rather. No blue cards in pack two. Yourself? Is it incest? No. No, it is not. That was an easy question. Dude gets a time travel belt and falls in love with himself. I mean, I don't need that. I just need a beer. Seems like a believable plotline to me. Ooh, is the courtship gonna become contested? Is Big Daddy Duretti gonna be the one, the one planeswalker with a newer Karn away from himself? Hmm. 
I think however it works out, Magda probably uh, approves of the union, hum. Also a steam vents here in a smuggler's cap game. I think I like the Magda. Just a little bit of acceleration. Like underground sea over the demonic two dream. Could ditch black, could ditch black or ditch blue. I don't think we can ditch red. Maybe ditching blue makes the most sense. There are some nice artifact matters cards, but we have these two uh black duels. Maybe Karn's getting sick of his dad hanging around all the time, interfering with his love life. Hmm. I think the Faithless Looting could be a hint, a hint in the Duretti direction. Doesn't seem like a Karn move, huh? Hello. This is, um, this is the part where we go from a PG-13 tale, maybe an R-rated tale, in this story of, uh, of goblins and machine lovemaking. I need to blur out some images here. Fade to black, yeah, exactly. The implied. Does Mannequin do anything? Does it help our story at all? I think every every story needs a god of storytelling, hum. Well, that's what we're doing here. We're telling a story. Every tale will be improved with the Bergine. Smokestack here. I really like Smokestack Index that can drop it quickly. I think I like Copter. Nice way to get to the honeymoon. We have the perfect driver. Yeah, as I was saying, I really like decks that can uh, play Smokestack early. I think that matters. Some people focus on having, like, recurring sources of permanence and stuff, I think that's the wrong way to consider Smokestack. Because a lot of times you can uh, get like a bit of Blossom or whatever going and then your Smokestack is just way too slow. It just doesn't matter. And Smokestack kind of breaks parity by itself, right? The opponent um, has to sacrifice first. And your Smokestack decks uh, tend to have more permanence than your opponent's decks, because they tend to be artifact-based, right? As opposed to spell-based. Your Storm or Reanimator or Control opponent is still gonna... be sacrificing. Have fewer permanence than yourself. So yeah, I think speed matters more, and we only have Ancient Tomb, really. Can't Can't even turn to it. If we had the workshop, I would like it. Well, we 
got a nice stable mana base. We did end up with three Planeswalkers, but two of them are Karn. So I think it works out. We do need a Cutter too. I can see losing the Sleeper. I do like having efficient creatures for crewing. Maybe we don't need a Hearse and Copter. Maybe that's more vehicles that we need. Hey, did the great this is 79 months there. Vivid says, from my recollection, you only stream at this time because you love answering the question, why are you streaming so early? Is this still true? That's it, Vivid Gray. That is really the only reason that I would ever stream early. Is there a rule that Planeswalkers can only love other Planeswalkers? No, there is no such rule in the lore. But, the Stip did mention two Planeswalkers. And I did help narrow the field a bit, huh? Still a lot of possible suitors for that for that, uh, that Karn going around the table. It was fun to make patches. I think it's gonna be a cool group. A lot of characters. A full third of the party is Kender. Which I might I might care about more, but currently I'm very poor, so it's whatever. But yeah, we already leveled up. I've got a very chonky Hill Dwarf Wizard. Like 18 HP at level 2. <laughs> a little extra. A little extra on the midsection. <laughs> Nothing wrong with that. Excessive. One person's excessive. <laughs> and another person's, you know, just the right, just the right amount. <clears throat> it's a preference thing, right? What's the setting? The Dragonlance. Dragonlance setting. Yeah, I can see cutting the Bergy. I'm gonna be the Bone Crusher Giant. Fucking, <laughs> fucking worm coil engine over here looking terrified. So the Dark Ritual can give us double black for Shieldred. I think this is fine. Still want like a bunch of red sources for turn one Ragavan. Is Rieger our narrator? Correct. And Bergy, like all great narrators, is working from the sidelines, right? Like all great storytellers. They don't need to work themselves into the story. Awesome Duke Wiggles, glad you enjoyed it. Not a terrible looking deck here either. Not the best version of this. But we're really only a workshop short. Will we take over the workshops again? I don't remember. I think it was like what, our literal first artifact. <laughs> like the Izzet Signet or something.
Streaming during lunchtime. Yeah. Put that lunch down. Come watch my stream. No, you can, you can eat lunch. I had salad for lunch. It was alright. Breakfast, I guess. Turn one goblin well day. Don't hate it. We need a um, a loot effect for the worm coil hum, which we do have in Faithless Looting in the deck, but we don't have it in our opener. Final bride and groom and the being carn and ready. Uh, I think it's a little bit messier than that. I think it's Karn and Karn and Doretti. I don't know. I don't know if it's polygamy. If two of the uh, if two of the spouses are the same person. This is a zesty start from the opponent, Tom. Huh? Lucky? Yeah, I feel lucky. Let's make them huck something. If they want to keep if and they want to keep the P and K. I imagine they do. I guess our best draw here is Dark Ritual, huh? Get the shielded down. Maybe stem the bleeding a little bit. Nah, we're pretty dead. So that didn't go well. This is just a warm up. Just, just a warm up game. <laughs> this is a warm up murder. Just a little, just a little war up stomping. Get a sweat worked up. Getting murdered real bad is thirsty work. Uh, sure, Master Mike. A bad turn too. Ooh, we could top take a worm, uh, worm coil engine. Drop that turn three. Well, that would be a sexy start. What's a planeswalker love story? We drafted planeswalkers into the love story. It's not. It's not cryptic at all, really. What does the worm coil do in the wedding? The worm coil is more about the uh, the after part, uh, the whole consummation, Mister Minister by Angels. Let's we'll say the worm coil plays a part. Abbot staying back means I want to kill this abbot. It looks like they're trying to do combined burn to kill the shielded right? Because otherwise, wouldn't the abbot serve? Maybe they just wanted to chump. Box. 
Warp Coil with a as a ring bearer. I mean, <laughs> that that worm might wear a, a ring. It might not be the typical one for a wedding. I'm uh, I'm talking about a uh, a cock ring. If that wasn't clear, it's it's a ring that you put on your penis. You see, well, it's not the. At a wedding, there's a ring bearer that where that carries a ring. I'm saying this would be different. This is more about the uh, the part where they do it. <clears throat> anyway, I, I was hoping that that I wasn't being too subtle, but I, I figured I should make sure. Explain it slower. Use smaller words. The shield would go in the distance. A little bit of help. Mm, I'm gonna bring the thunder. You thought it was a PG-13 stream? What word did I say that wasn't PG-13? I think each PG-13 movie gets one penis. Can, can you say fuck in a PG-13 mov movie? You can say exactly one of those. So I can't say it, I can't, I can't say that word. I can't use that particular swear anymore for the rest of the stream. If I want to keep the PG-13 rating. Said cock? Yeah, cock is, uh... Cock is PG-13 language, folks. <laughs> you can say bollocks. Yeah! Use some horrendous British swears. So we had two very different games, huh? Two very different games. Let's see what game three looks like. That's a good opener. Shag is supposed to be offensive to British? I don't think so. It just means sex, right? I mean, maybe the mere, maybe the mere idea of disrobing around a fellow human being is offensive to some British folk, but. Only offensive to carpets, exactly. Yeah, that was my impression, ass boat. I just mean sex. A casual term for it. A zesty start from the opponent here. Follow-up has been less aggressive on the first game. We connecting? You know, you're gonna take the hit? You're gonna take the hit?
I might need this treasure for black mana. So I'm gonna chill on it for now. Oh, my things. Well, that's a bummer. Oh, well, the night that Patty Murphy died, sure, that's the night I'll never forget. All the boys got roaring drunk, and some ain't sober yet. And as long as a bottle was passed around, all so we don't really have traditional removal. And Doggy came with his bagpipes. We can put like a shieldred or a warm coil in front of this inferno, and that's our way of getting rid of it. Seven mana Karn. Currently, we don't have the mana to warm coil, but we could set it up for next turn. And a bottle of whiskey stone. Yeah, I saw Master Mike. I'll get you. And they place the bottle on the carps to keep the liquor cold. And that's how they paid their respects to Patty Murphy. That's how they showed their honor and their pride. They said it was a sin and a shame when they winked at one another. And everything in the wake house went the night Pat Murphy died. Well, it was early in the morning, lads, when the funeral left the house. And everyone but poor old Mrs. Murphy was half soused. Uh, she was always soused. They made a I feel like Worm Coil Engine answers an Inferno Titan better than. Oh, I might just be dead now. Yeah, if it was just Inferno Titan and Lava Mancer serving, we might have been okay. But this is, uh. This is gonna beat me. Because they'll have six points of direct damage next turn. Or, or I'm, I'm dead right now. One of, the, one of those. <laughs> but even had we survived that attack, we'd have been drawing dead. Well, dead. Well, dead. That old Pat's been underground. And every year to celebrate, they all push the jug around. They gather at the graveyard. Oh, that was my mistake, Flax a bit. I guess I'll turn the stream off. Cause everybody hated that lousy son of a That's how they paid their respects for Patty Murphy. That's how they showed their honor and their pride. They said it was a sin and a shame and they winked at one another. And everything in the wake house went the night. This was the mic song request. Very urgent stuff. Now thanks for the five bucks, Mike. Ancient tomb for the revoker would have been hot, huh? Let's run it out on turn two, though. If you have to go turn one Ancient Tomb Revoker on the plane, then I'm probably just naming Black Lotus. Unless I have a Black Lotus in my deck, um, then I name Soul Ring. I definitely don't want to blind name a planeswalker. Much better to name something that anyone put, would put in their deck. <clears throat> Splitting the relic will keep the rift wing from. Bouncing land, at least.
I will take the three. Oh shit, what? Interesting. So we could Relic Shock something. I don't like Karn Draw. Hey, Cory Mary! Thanks for the sob things for the 26 months. Why must the cube leave us? That's a good question. Sometimes with a player group and a cube evolve, things change over time, you know? We might still be into the cube, but the cube is just a little less into us these days. <laughs> hey, we got our something borrowed. It's literally Karn. Karn's the something blue and the something borrowed and getting married. Spot hum. I like getting the Lava Claw down. It's not sure what I'm gonna do besides that. Maybe just Relic. Make some Relic mana. Play a Warm Coil. Maybe get my Chump on. I think I'm into that. Hell yeah, so it'll hustle. Yeah, I thought about traveling to that show. Yep, very much so, Richter Mail. Yeah, Fast Bond is very deck dependent. Whereas the Moxes is going to get played and everything. What up? Oh shit, what up? Hey Normsman, thanks for the sob sharing the Twitch Prime with me. If Warm Coil gets countered, Dreddy can bring him back next turn. I think I might just have to Thunder Maw here. We're under a, kind of a lot of pressure, right? Do I think the artifact deck has gotten better? It's gotten a little bit better, yeah. I've got a few more supporting pieces now. I trophy with it more often than I did in previous seasons. And I don't know if that means the deck itself is better, or if I'm better at drafting it, or, you know, it could be like a number of things. Could have uh, upgraded the servo there. Maybe they missed. Another Mox Pro was turned on again. Dreddy Spaghetti? Dreddy Spaghetti was years ago, friend. Oh 
shit, what up? Oh shit, what up? Hey, Logicism, thanks for the resub. The 49 months. So I could double walker. Maybe that's good. Feels like we got something rolling, huh? Where did the win streak end up? We got 20 matches in a row, which is not a bad win streak. A little bit over half of my lifetime total for best win streak. Not a bad run, yeah. I was asked to update a bio for a for an interview type type thing for a website, and I included the uh, the 38 match win streak as one of my recent accomplishments. <clears throat> Pressure chilling here too. <clears throat> Was it my Tinder bio? bio? No, no, no. <laughs> That'd be a zesty include though, huh? Once I won 38 matches of Magic the Gathering in a row, yeah, I'm kind of a big deal. Gotta put KubeCon champ in that. Would Tinder for Magic players be called Sparker? I don't know, but... I also, I also don't think it'd be me. Regardless of what it's called, I don't think I'd be making an account on this particular service. Hmm. Obviously nothing against magic players, but uh <laughs> I think I, I think I already know where to, uh, to go meet folks. That's really what I want to do. The very specific one demographic <laughs> that I think I can I uh, know where to meet, regardless of where I am in the world or country. gonna see that person from the other day again. I am. We're gonna see each other on Thursday. No stream on Thursday. Too. 
I'm cheating on my Twitch chat with you. I probably, I probably won't do that. You thought we had something special? No, that was Doretti and Karn. I feel like you weren't paying attention to the story. Ready and Karn and Karn. Yeah. Kind of glad I didn't march and evolve sleeper into that. Yeah, we'll remember the Finkel thing. I wonder if that article had an influence on, like, showing people that Rage Bait just works extremely effectively. Because nobody was on that person's side, but their article got a shitload of clicks. Just, like, from people rage reading and stuff. Captain Wacky. That is an aggressive force negation. source here would be really good. So we can clear the Chandra. Next turn's gonna be a little bit harder, right? Because the Chandra will be at six. Could make him clear to ready. Could start re-leveling the sleeper. I suppose I'd do that. One and one. There's a, a score at the bottom right hand corner. The up arrow just means that I'm up a game. the trade, but oops. But it's not like Smuggler's Copter is not great too, right? One of them's like short-term grade, the other one's long-term grade. Do I go to FNMs? 
Sometimes. Oh shit, what up? It's not exactly an FM, but um sometimes people meet to jam pre-modern on Friday evenings. Hey Brendan, just Brendan, thinks that sob thinks of seven months there. Ooh, that's a nice time warp. That's a gorgeous time warp. Not alive here from my end, hum. Gotta get a hit on the Chandra, keep it from Ulton. Oh, fun mythic common. Yeah, I'm missing um, Mox Diamonds. My, my biggest uh, deck building restriction in pre modern. Not sure if I'll, I'll ever uh, clear that particular hurdle. I'm sure they will, Brendan. Yeah. The, uh, the power cards are already. already coded in, right? To game three we go. This is it, folks. Is this love story going to have a happy ending or a sad ending? If we win this game three, then there's still hope. There's still hope for a third act. Third of uh, a uh, hope for the back rally. But if we lose here, this tale is getting cut short. That'll be it. Will love prevail? Yeah, yeah. Or is love less useful than other things like soul rings and time warps? Has it been a while since I had to go to drop? Uh, we had a couple scrubs. I don't remember if we scrubbed it all the other day, but before the win streak, there was a day where I had a couple of scrubs on the same day. I remember because there were there were multiple. I don't know if either of them were 0 and 2 though, or if they were both 1 and 2s. But yeah, sometime in the past week. Definitely. Pre-modern sounds fun. Pre-modern is fun. It's a vibe. Love stories or tragedies only? That doesn't sound correct. You know the, um, the definition of tragedy has changed over the years? It used to be that the difference between a comedy and a tragedy was not that, like, one was a bummer and the other one made you laugh. So we could Coligan's Command here. We could also Demonic Tutor. I think I want to put the Coalition Relic. I think it was originally about, like, how many people died in the third act. Like, if everyone fucking died, then it was a tragedy, even if, like, the entire rest of the the play was comedic in nature. All about the head count. I've been having fun so far, Fluffy. We started off with a trophy with Mono Black Reanimator. 
Now we're doing a step here. Now it's closer to the meaning of a farce. You're talking about comedy? Yeah, maybe. Ooh. Ooh this Colgan's command just got a little bit juicier. Should I loot? Let's loot. Such a good card. Ooh. There's something to um, serving there, and if they block with Porcelain Legionnaire, then I can use Bone Crusher to kill the Porcelain. If they crew the copter, then I have to bone crusher the copter. You get like one and a half for one. I think the Magda plus Smuggler's copter is good enough. Then just chilling here is correct. And I'm feeling very glad that I saved my bone crusher giant because I might get to clear this mentor with it. Fucking time walk. <laughs> Y'all see that? treasure because <laughs> this was cute <laughs> this is fucking adorable that's why top they would have played top if they had um they just would have cracked their fetch and played it got the mentor trigger a dragon maybe yeah a dragon or a chandra maybe been mighty tempted to keep the time walk though, that's for sure. This click? Yeah, yeah, that's what it was. Monastery Mentor and Smuggler's Copter. Time Walk's much better than a piece of counter magic, but yeah, who knows? What 
if that's what they held on to. fucking dragon happy we have dra a dragon and we have artifacts Dragon D's cards. Yeah, that makes sense. Dragon D's cards across the battlefield. Classified. You don't have the clearance. for Magdam. Lonely Dwarf. We're gonna have kind of a zesty attack here, aren't we? Did I just whiff? Fifteen An opponent. And the love story continues. Love on the path of triumphing. Coming back. Coming back to steal our heart of hearts. Oh shit, what up? Oh shit, what up? Hey Blitzkrieg four five three one. It's the sob of sixty two months. Love is a battlefield. Love is a dunghill, Betty. And I am but the cock that climbs upon it for which to crow. Oh shit, what up? Oh shit, what up? Get the gaming champ, thinks the sob thinks the three months there. Was a Rob Roy reference. Tim Roth plays um, a top tier despicable villain. One of the slimiest bastards you'll ever see in the cinema. And there's a very satisfying sword duel at the end between him and uh, Liam Neeson's character. Yeah, I suppose we keep this. Rip a mountain. Really sick cast, though. I think Lang's in that. We did fucking god damn it. Should have been a mountain, I guess, or a swamp, I guess.
Yeah, you cannot name a land with Phyrexian Revoker. Not a thing that that card can do. The portal cometh. Pretty good job in that role, Archivist. I think he was in some of the best She-Hulk episodes, huh? I didn't hate, uh, what's-his-face is Hulk either. Norton? Edward Norton? Is that it? New guy's pretty good, though. New Hulk dude. Oh, man. Thunder Mom. Getting to do what Thunder Mom do do. Norton is your Hulk. I'm into it. I thought he did a good job. I thought that movie did a lot of things well. I like how they, like... Wrapped his origin story up in the the fucking intro credits. They were like, yeah. <laughs> so anyone that like didn't know Hulk's origin story, they just get it in like a really efficient way, as they're just like introducing the actors anyway. And people that it, were familiar with Hulk didn't have to sit through that shit again. <laughs> oh no, an accident with green slime. Well, glad that didn't take an hour and a half. <laughs> Grand Hulk has just been locked into, like, Smart Hulk, though. For, like, a couple of films and a TV series now. It's starting to become... tedious. It's not, like, fresh anymore, right? The whole Jekyll and Hyde dynamic is just not there. World War Hulk, please. There is a World War Hulk adaptation already, hoax. He doesn't, uh, he doesn't tear the planet in half. Spoilers. But, um, there are child incinerations, so... Some pros, some cons. Still a little dark. A little dark for an animated movie. Can I explain the love story in this deck? Yeah! So there's two Karns and a Duretti, and they uh, they get down. That's a, that's pretty much it. It's not a it's not a complicated tale. It was a little bit more elaborate during the um, during the drafting process. There were more, a few more twists and turns in there. So if I want to turn to Magda, then I don't think I actually want to tomb into Revoker. Could turn to relic. Yeah, I'll do that. Salivating at the, the Porcelain Legionnaire. You want a hate story next? No, no, that's not very kind. No, that's not very, that's not very kind. The Thor movie? No, I mean, literally Planet, Planet Hulk. Are you trying to somebody else? Yeah, 
Yeah, it's got a 6.7 on IMDb. PG-13, 2010. Yeah. And again, it doesn't exactly follow the comic, but... I thought it had its good moments. Oh shit, what up? Oh shit, what up? Hey, sugar bear honey, thanks for the sob, thanks for the five months there. You resub for all the love stories over the years. Aww. It's supposed to be attack, huh? Yeah, Marvel made a couple that were animated DC tier. Uh, Planet Hulk I would put on that level, and um, Doctor Strange, the Doctor Strange movie I would put on that level too, and the Wonder Woman movie. I think those three were the best that I saw from uh, from Marvel. Wonder Woman's DC, my apologies. <laughs> you have to check out the Doctor Strange. Yeah, I think the uh, montage where he's like developing his powers is is much better than um than the films. Felt like there was more trials and tribulations. I can have more weight to it. Yeah, I didn't mind the first, uh... Is this the third Ant-Man movie or the second one? Kind of obnoxiously good Cooligan's Command, huh? This is the third one. Gotcha. I didn't mind the first or the first and second ones of Ant-Man. I don't know. I don't know if I give a shit about this one, though. I'll probably watch it. I'll watch all the stuff. All that nerd trash. Anyone excited about the D&D movie? Anyone? D&D <laughs> movie? about where we want to hold on to lands for faithless looting. You are? Yeah! <laughs> it does look fun. I'm a little cynical. Um, the, the, the last one. The last one burned everybody so hard. <laughs> Even that one I enjoyed, though. So if I did, uh, if I had cool against command the worm coil last turn, I'd be getting attacked by two three threes now. Because I'm doing it this turn, I can make it indestructible. Fuck me up that way. Well, I guess we fucking activate the relic and chump, huh? In a very rough spot, we do have a dragon that could get in front of an angel. And a uh, goblin welder, or a goblin welder doesn't work with worm coil, right? I can't because it's mine. So they have to own both pieces, right? With goblin welder. Two 
choose target artifact, a player controls a target artifact in that player's graveyard. Okay. If both targets are still legal as this ability resolves, <laughs> that player simultaneously sacrifices the artifact and returns the artifact card to the battlefield. Okay. Yeah, so it would have worked. Would have worked fine. We were pretty dead though, between the the flyer and the uh, the tar pit and all that, all that business. I almost like smokestack on the play. Should I bring in smokestack? <laughs> Let's fucking do it. Except for the whole dying thing, exactly. If we had a black source for this dark ritual, I'd be really into this opener. Man, should have kept it anyway. I'm not sure about that, between the shield and the braid there. I think you want to keep the artifacts. Fey Run is a made-up world. You take that back. You're a made-up world. Apology accepted, Sibwow. Thank you for coming around so quickly. choice to me, Red Farad. Seems <laughs> very easy. <laughs> well, that's pretty sexy. Turn. Could let them interact with me, but it also prevents them from uh, doing sorcery speed removal on the worm coil. But it does OP open up to randomly bounce spells and stuff. Hey, we won! Look at that! Love prevailed! Love prevailed! The Duretti and the Karns get to ride off in the sunset together. Fun little machine goblin trio going on. Nice. Over five and one on the day. That's not bad either, huh? 